I think if you're going to talk about the causes of the conflict, you have to come at it from three different perspectives. First of all, you have to ask, what are the deep causes of the crisis? What are the structural factors that underpin this conflict? Then you have to talk about the precipitating causes, because the crisis broke out on February 22, 2014. Things were not terrible until February 22, 2014. And that's when everything went to hell in a handbasket. And the question is, what caused it then? If you focus on deep causes, it can't tell you why something happened in February 2014. But the precipitating causes are designed to get at that. And then what we want to talk about is the Russian reaction. Why the Russians did what they did with regard to Crimea with regard to eastern Ukraine. We want to talk about exactly what they did and then why they did it. So let's start with the deep causes. My argument is that the West is principally responsible for this mess, not the Russians. Uh, this, of course, is not the conventional wisdom in the United States. And in fact, except for Steve Cohen, who's now at Princeton, I mean now at NYU, he used to be at Princeton, Henry Kissinger, and maybe a handful of other people, uh, there are not many people who agree with me, but uh, I, I think the facts are quite clear on this, that the West is responsible. And my aim is that the main deep causes, the aim of the United States and its European allies, to peel Ukraine away from Russia's orbit and incorporate it into the West. Our basic goal has been to make Ukraine a Western bulwark on Russia's border. And Russia says, this ain't happening, period, end of story. And we will do everything we can to make sure it does not happen. That's the deep cause. Now, take it a step further. There are three key elements in our strategy. The first is NATO expansion, and in many ways the most important. And I'll talk in some detail about that in a second. But as you all know, since the Cold War ended, starting with the Clinton administration, we have been moving NATO eastward toward Russia's border. And the Russians have said, this is an absolute no-no. And I'll walk you through the story in a minute. Second is EU expansion. EU expansion is all about integrating Ukraine economically into the West, the way we are in the process of integrating Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, the Baltic states, into the West. And of course, we're doing that with NATO as well. These are two sets of institutions, NATO, military institution, the EU, an economic institution. And the idea, again, is to take Ukraine, peel it away from Russia, and make it part of the West. The third part of the story is fostering an orange revolution. This is all about promoting democracy in Ukraine and in other places. As you all know, the United States runs around the world trying to topple regimes and put in their place democratically elected regimes. And for almost all of you, me included, it's hard to be against promoting democracy. We all love democracy. But if you're Vladimir Putin, uh, or if you're part of the leadership in Beijing, when the United States talks about democracy promotion, that means toppling your regime. And you won't be surprised to hear this. They don't like that in Beijing, and they don't like that in Moscow. Right? They do not like that. Right? The Chinese believe that we're behind the protests in Hong Kong. You go to Beijing, and you talk to Chinese elites, the idea that we're promoting democracy around the world, and especially in East Asia, just drives them crazy. Because they think they're in the crosshairs. And you know what? They are in the crosshairs. Because our basic strategy is to topple regimes all over the world. Not simply because we like democracy, but because we believe that whoever gets elected will be pro-Western. So we're killing two birds with one stone. We're promoting democracy and getting leaders who are pro-American. But again, you can see the strategy here, NATO expansion, EU expansion, and promoting democracy. I'll say a bit more about NATO expansion because it's so important. Uh, NATO expansion took uh, place in two tranches. 
The first one was in 1999. That's when you get Poland, the Czech Republic, and Hungary incorporated into NATO. The second big tranche was in 2004. And that's when the Baltic states, you can see Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania up top, Romania, Bulgaria, these are the light brown countries. That's the second tranche of NATO expansion. Now, the Soviets made it clear from the mid-1990s they were adamantly opposed to NATO expansion. But number one, they were too weak to do anything about it. And two, it didn't involve the states that were right on their border. I mean, there's no question, as you can see from the map, that Latvia and Estonia are on Russia's border, and Lithuania uh, as well, if you want to include that little enclave between Poland and Lithuania. But, but the fact is, these were very small states. It was early in the game, and the Russians were willing to live with it. But then the big trouble starts. And it comes in the famous Bucharest summit, uh, NATO's Bucharest summer in, summit in April 2008, where at the end of the summit, uh, a declaration is issued which says, NATO welcomes Ukraine's and Georgia's Euro-Atlantic aspirations for membership in NATO. We agreed today that these countries will become members of NATO. So, excuse me, the Soviets, the Russians made this perfectly clear. This was unacceptable. Russia's deputy foreign minister said, Georgia's and Ukraine's membership in the alliance is a huge strategic mistake, which will have most serious consequences for pan-European security. Putin himself said, Georgia and Ukraine becoming part of NATO is a direct threat to Russia. You all remember that there was a war between Russia and Georgia in August 2008. That war was a consequence of this, because the Georgians thought we were sending them a signal that they could get uppity with the Russians, and we would back them because they were going to become part of NATO. That's not what happened. And you know what happened. The Russians clobbered the Georgians, and Georgia is in deep trouble today because it thought it, be, it could become part of NATO. So you want to remember that April 2008 summit, very important. That declaration, very important. And then what happens is you have a war. So those are the deep causes, those three strategies. NATO expansion, EU expansion, and promoting democracy. What about the precipitating cause? 